Capitalism and Disability by Marta Russell. This is another very short chapter. Chapter 17, The United States versus the World. The Bush administration continues to set itself apart from world opinion, this time by not actively supporting a UN effort to create a disability-sensitive human rights treaty. Fortunately, more than 100 other nations do not share the US's position. The administration's views became known at the second ad hoc committee meeting of the United, S United Nations on a comprehensive and integral international convention to promote and protect the rights and dignity of persons with disabilities, held in New York, June 16th to 27th in 2003. The General Assembly charged the panel with deciding whether the United Nations should develop a disability-themed human rights treaty. Almost immediately, Ralph Boyd, the U.S. Assistant Attorney General for Civil Rights, said a global treaty on disability and human rights was not necessary. Instead, he said countries should follow the U.S. model and adopt non-discrimination laws. The United States would help craft such model laws, he said, but not with the expectation that we will become party to any resulting legal instrument. For Disabled People's Organizations, DPOs, this assertion was especially galling because, if anything, the recent record of the U.S. court system, Congress, and many state legislatures is one that has consistently undermined these very rights. The administration's perception that the United States has laws that seamlessly integrate disabled people into American society bellies reality. For many years now, disability activists have watched the business-friendly Supreme Court shrink the legal definition of disability to accommodate employers instead of employees with disabilities. Increasingly, deserving Americans who seek redress in court face summary judgments instead of jury trials. Meanwhile, enforcement of key laws such as the ADA, the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, and the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act has fallen short. Yet the administration now asserts that our laws are a model for the world. It is also important to understand the inherent limitations of adopting non-discrimination laws. While these laws have moved public policy from a medical notion of disability to the wider recognition that disabled persons are a grouping within society that faces rampant social and economic discrimination, non-discrimination laws are not enough to address the entirety of disability rights. Under principles of non-discrimination, for instance, there is no broader right to be free from hunger or right to have shelter. With 82% of the 600 million disabled persons worldwide living in developing nations, the lack of access to food kills thousands of disabled children yearly. 13% of over 2 million recorded instances of human rights breaches since 1990 have resulted in the deaths of disabled individuals. In addition, many policies pushed by the International Mon Monetary Fund and the World Bank have widened socioeconomic inequalities in developing countries, not narrowed them. Thus, increasing global poverty has compounded the isolated, degrading, and dehumanizing conditions in which disabled persons live. For DPOs, a comprehensive treaty would include a guarantee of social and economic rights, along with non-discrimination measures. It would embrace affirmative action to ensure that disabled persons have access to community living, in-home support services, jobs, affordable health care, accessible housing, and other societal supports in non-segregated settings. Even in a wealthy society such as the United States, disabled people too often go homeless because of a lack of rights and social policies within our borders. There are 28 rights in the UN Declaration of Human Rights. A few rights tailored to disability would include the right to be free from torture and cruel, inhuman and degrading treatment of punish or punishment, including violent and harmful medical practices, such as putting developmentally disabled persons in cages or performing involuntary psychiatric procedures. The right to personal integrity, freedom from degrading, dehumanizing treatment, not to be institutionalized or abused by caregivers. The right to marry and have a family. The right to life, as opposed to being chained in a public square and starved to death. The right to be free from forced sterilization. The right to access the justice system, 
i.e. to sign language interpreters in court. <clears throat> Additionally, it is necessary to include disabled people's right to bodily and psychic integrity, including autonomy and decision making. In sum, disabled people's movements seek to overturn the assertion that disability is pathological in health terms and a social problem in welfare terms. Disabled persons want to be citizens with human rights. This was the agenda promoted at the United Nations by groups including the World Federation of the Deaf, the World Blind Union, Disabled Peoples International, the World Federation of the Deaf Blind, the World Network of Users and Survivors of Psychiatry, and Inclusion International. Fortunately, the administration's efforts to derail pro progress on global disability rights were largely ignored by the international community participating in the UN session. <coughs> Delegates agreed not only to proceed with drafting a treaty, but also to include disabled persons selected by DPOs in the drafting group. While it is likely a treaty will be drafted, whether the outcome will be a strong treaty and whether it will be ratified and implemented are yet other matters. The United States has failed to ratify the Convention on the Rights of the Child, the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, the Landmine Ban Treaty, and to sign on the International Criminal Court or the Kyoto Accord. And it has failed to enforce numerous domestic laws that would work towards the goals expressed by the international community in these treaties. Regardless, the United Nations has a role to set a globally recognized set of standards, whether or not countries sign on to them. The significance here is historic. Disabled people are, are at long last gaining the power to secure a place for legally binding disability law at the human rights table. But earlier she was talking about how uh, contradictory, my friend.